Okay, so here's kind of an intro to tapping. Um, first things first, if I'm not using a pick, I think my first finger is the best finger to use in order to tap. If I am using a pick, my first finger and thumb can take care of the pick while I tap with my second finger. All right, I'm gonna be going through three different ways to tap. First is gonna be pattern-based, second is gonna be um, scale-based, and then third is gonna be chord-based. Another thing is that typically we tap three notes, in which case, um, for example, if my tapping finger is on the 12th fret, my first finger is on the um, fifth fret, and then my pinky is on the eighth fret, we can all descend, and then we can also um, hit tap, go to the first finger. Another thing is that when we tap, we don't want to just pull, take off our finger, we kind of want to snap it down. That way this, all the other notes following are going to be just as loud as our tapping note. Okay, so first is going to be pattern based. Here we're not so um, concerned with the kind of scale or chord that we're playing over. Here we're just trying to play fast. So um, if I were to do something over like an A power chord, I am kind of thinking of the minor pentatonic when I'm playing, but that my fingers on my left hand are all doing the same thing on the same frets, no matter what string they're on, and then my tapping finger is also staying across um, one fret as well as I move down the strings. So, for example, my twelfth of uh, my tapping fingers on the twelfth fret on the first string, my first finger on my left hand is going to be in the fifth fret, seventh of fret is going to be where my third finger is, and then my pinky is going to be in the eighth fret. So, here's something I can do. Like I said, I'm just concerned about playing fast, not about playing the right um, scale or playing over the chords or anything. Next is going to be our scale based. Here we are a little bit more concerned with our scale. Now we can go about this going just down one string, or we can kind of go through a scale um, almost like our boxes, like our cage shaped boxes. So first is going to be our um, across one string, I'm using my A minor pentatonic again. So my scale is this. What I want to do is I want to keep my left hand consistent, or kind of right there on just the 5th and 8th fret, have my tapping finger go down the scale. Now if I go across kind of our box positions, if I take just this as an example, my minor pentatonic, and then kind of the next shape, my D minor shape pentatonic, what I can do is have my left hand take care of that uh, E minor, or just my um, kind of home bass scale right there, and then my tapping finger can move across. Now that was just one example with uh, two sets of boxes. You can do that with any box where your left hand is taking care of anything. So experiment with it. The next one is going to be my chord tones. So here what we're looking for is the triad of, uh, of the chord that we're playing over. Since we're playing an A, I'm going to give you both the A minor and the A major shapes. Now what's nice about this is that it works the same over all strings. You just know where your root note is. So that's what, that's what I'm going to be pointing out right now. So. Um, if we take our A minor, with we have three notes, A, C, and E. We're only going to be playing those three notes, only that um, the only thing that changes is just which fingers are taking care of which notes. So, for example, my root note here is going to be on the A, my first finger on my left hand, my pinky is going to be on the third, which is going to be my uh, four, three frets higher than my root note, um, on the where my pinky is, and then here one, two, three, four frets higher than where my pinky is, is going to be where my first finger is tapping. Okay, so now if I go um, to where my first finger's on that third now, got a little bit bigger of a stretch, I have one, two, three, four uh, frets between my first finger and my pinky now. And then I have one, two, three, four, five frets between my pinky and my first finger. This is C, E, A now.
Lastly, I can put my first finger on that third way up here, and then I can have my first finger take care of the E, and then my pinky on the A. This is probably the biggest stretch. What we have is we have one, two, three, four, five between my first finger and my pinky. Now one, two, three frets between my um, pinky and my third finger. Now again, if we take a look at where our root notes are, we can put that with any chord. So the major shapes are gonna be almost the same, except that my C as we turn into a C sharp. So my first finger is gonna, between my first finger, the root note here, and my pinky, there's gonna be one, two, three, four frets now, and then one, two, three frets between my first finger, my tapping finger, and my pinky. Now, if we move my first finger to the third pinky, to the uh, fifth, and then my tapping finger to the root, we have three frets between my first finger and the um, and my pinky. We have one, two, three, four, five frets between my pinky and my tapping finger. Now, one more is where we kind of have this giant stretch between our first finger and our pinky way up here, and that is gonna be one, two, three, four, five frets between my first finger and my pinky, then one, two, three, four frets between my pinky and my tapping finger. Here my root is on my pinky.